Welcome back. It's me, Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review. And today from McFarlane Toys in collaboration with Marvel Comics, we are featuring Wolverine. Okay, so last week I reviewed the McFarlane Marvel Deadpool figure, uh, which isn't really a figure. It's kind of a pre-posed figure slash uh, mini statue. And that figure, uh, it kind of took me by surprise. I didn't think I would like it as much as I did. Uh, when they first announced the line of action figures, um, or at least when they first announced the partnership between McFarlane Toys and Marvel, um, I was kind of excited because I thought there was the possibility of them making like um, action figures that were the equivalent of the DC multiverse. Uh, but I was kind of disappointed when I learned a little bit later that they were going to just give us, uh, you know, the statues. But at the same time, I was kind of reminded of how much I loved McFarlane's toys during the late 90s and early 2000s when a lot of their action figures were just essentially mini statues. So I, I kind of got really excited at the prospect of them, um, you know, releasing stuff that kind of fell within my wheelhouse when I was much younger. Uh, we do see a lot of the McFarlane mini statues uh, today with their like movie maniacs. You might have seen some of their figures like the Lord of the Rings, uh, Fallout, or even like, uh, I think, what is it, um, Diablo. Uh, some of those figures, they're miniature statues and they're beautiful. So the Deadpool one took me by surprise. I thought it was great. And um, I have it proudly displayed at my desk at work. And the next figure I really wanted was Wolverine. And I was very lucky. I found this yesterday at my local Target. And today is August 9th, uh, 2024. Um, it's a beautiful looking figure. Uh, much like the Deadpool and some of the movie maniacs, it, it comes in this kind of like cubish uh, box, which is a little bit oversized. Um, I kind of mentioned this in my Deadpool figure. I kind of feel like the packaging um, could use some improvement, especially when these figures are, uh, I believe, are um, 1 12th scale, or they're, they're anywhere between 1 10th to 1 12th scale, and they, they kind of pair up pretty well with the Hasbro Marvel Legend figures in terms of their size. So for me, I think it would have been smarter to package this similar to the like how the Marvel Legends figures are packaged. Just so I think you'd have a lot of crossover appeal. You know, some collectors who are mint in box would love to be able to display some of these next to the Hasbro stuff. Uh, but for whatever reason, they opted for the larger um, boxes. Which is understandable because, you know, this is kind of like their standard across the line for their miniature statues. Um, uh, so we have the Marvel Wolverine, inspired by X-Men issue number one. Um, if you're a fan um, of, like, the comic book X-Men, especially from the 90s, uh, this issue um, probably strikes close to home to you. Um, this is the gatefold cover uh, done by Jim Lee and Scott Williams. Uh, it looks, you know, this it's essentially Wolverine's recreating this pose right there. And then the comic book cover is recreated again on the side of the box up close. So if you're a comic book collector from back in the day, you probably have multiple copies of X-Men number one. Uh, to the best of my memory, I remember there being, I think there were, how many variant covers? I think there were four variant covers plus the gatefold. So there was the um, cover with Cyclops and Wolverine. There was a cover with Magneto. There was a cover with um, Beast, Rogue, and Gambit. And then I think there was one with like Psylocke, Colossus, and Professor X. And then you, you put all the covers together and you make this giant image. And then the final variant was the gatefold where they combined all the covers, which is where this image comes from. On the back, again, another image of the comic book cover. I'm hoping they give us uh, Cyclops and um, Iceman. You know, for me, my dream is to give us all the characters that we saw on the cover of X-Men number one so, you can so that you can recreate the scene. You know, whether or not they do that, you know, we'll see. So let's take this figure out of the box. And I'm excited to check this out. One thing I mentioned in the Deadpool video is that I'm kind of curious about the execution on this figure uh, specifically just because the Deadpool figure, uh, it was very true to the comic book um, artwork done by Rob Liefeld. Whereas this figure, even though it does recreate the Jim Lee pose for Wolverine, it looks like they took some liberties and kind of embellished his costume with some texturing. Uh, which the Deadpool figure did not have. You know, it was a very smooth uh, plastic all around the figure. 
uh, they didn't take any liberties, you know, it's pretty much one for one. Whereas this one, uh, much like you might see uh, like on a DC multiverse figure, they kind of uh, went a, f a step further and enhanced Wolverine's costume with some texture on his bodysuit and armor. And I'm gonna, I'm really curious to see how that's gonna play out on this figure. It's surprising because I saw the Spider-Man figure at Target also, and it recreates the McFarlane cover. And I don't think they took any liberties. I think much like the Deadpool is pretty much really true to form. Uh, one thing um, I omitted in the Deadpool video, I didn't realize until much later, is that uh, the figures do come with this really cool um, cardboard display base in addition to the cardboard insert in the box. And this is nice because it gives you an additional piece that you can display your figure on. And it's kind of cool. I dig it a lot. Alright, so in addition to Wolverine, um, you also got the little trading card on the back. So, you know, be sure to don't uh, to hold on to this. You don't want to accidentally throw it away uh, if, you, if you discard the packaging. And yeah, I'm excited to check this out. It looks really cool. And hopefully he, I can remove them easily. Oh, okay, there's, I see it. All right, I didn't see the zip tie holding him down. One of my concerns with this figure, um, we'll see how it, how it fares, is that I'm worried that the claws might be warped. It seems like every Wolverine figure you're going to buy, the, the claws are always kind of bent or warped because they're made of a softer uh, plastic. Alright, it came out. Uh, because the Deadpool figure, if you happen to have the Deadpool one, or if you saw my review, uh, the... Um, uh, the guns and the swords were slightly warped. Uh, again, here's that display base that it comes with. It's kind of crazy because there's even like a, a very photo real ground texture. And if you have a like, nice shelf or, you know, um, detolf, you could just dis display this, you know, alongside to complement the scene. Um, my only criticism of the backdrop is that it's kind of this glossy finish. So it's really going to reflect light. Uh, I would have preferred it if it was matte, so it wouldn't um, oh, really like you know look too shiny or kind of like reflect light off of here onto the figure. As you can see right here, it's kind of glossy toward the upper corner. But here we go. We have Wolverine done by McFarlane Toys. Uh, the claws are. They're okay. Um, they're not as pointy as I'd like, but at least they're straight, which I'm grateful for. And I'm very conflicted as I'm handling this figure. Uh, just because I'm not too hot on the texturing they um, applied all over the figure. You know, I get it. They're trying to recreate kind of like a pseudo leather uh, finish. So it kind of has the the cracks and crackles of like leather here you can see it on the boot and then when you move on to the bodysuit it's a different texture you know it's kind of like a it's kind of like a pattern similar that you might find on like spider-man's undersuit you know on the blue areas of his costume so you have a, a pattern here on the underside and then an alternate pattern on the top which is a little bit more dotted it's it's kind of weird it kind of gives, it almost makes it look like Wolverine's made of like, like orange rind or orange peel, you know, like the actual fruit. It kind of resembles that kind of texture. I really wish they kind of went with a smooth approach like they did with the, <clears throat> the Deadpool figure where the texture is this very smooth and bare bones plastic. Because at the same time, I don't think it meshes well with the attempted cross hatching that they try to emulate. Um with the black here so with the black co colored pieces essentially what they're trying to do is recreate 
so similar like to a comic book inking style. Uh, back in the day, Jim Lee, he's a penciler, so he just pencils the artwork. And his artwork is often finished um, by inker and artist Scott Williams. And he was really known for his fine cross-hatching and line work. And they're kind of re trying to recreate that there, which I couldn't appreciate because that was very um, contemporary to the 90s in, the, in terms of this art style. But yeah, I kind of feel like the texture here on the costume kind of really conflicts with that. There's a part of me that if I could get get a hold of a second copy, I'd love to just like repaint this uh, figure and see what I could do with it. Uh, let's pull this out so we can get the colors adjusted better. Yeah, there we go. It's having some difficulty auto-focusing. There's a lot going on. Uh, the sculpting is it's very nice. You know, it's what you expect from McFarlane. I love the head. Um, I'd love to see a customizer out there, you know, take the head off and then, you know, either recast it or find a way to put it on a Marvel Legends body because it's incredibly well done. I love the um, the screaming face. It looks cool. The eyes are just right. They're not too large. His incisors on his teeth are, are slightly pointed, which is nice. You know, this is very true to form in terms of, like, recreating that Jim Lee pose. And not only does it capture the pose well, I think it does a good job of recreating Jim Lee's art style in 3D form. <clears throat> in 3D form. Um, uh, the proportions are well done. Uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm kind of losing my voice, so it's a little bit rough this morning trying to speak. But, yeah, that's a great figure. It looks... Uh, I, love, I love the texturing on the arms. You know, for me, that works because Wolverine has hairy arms. So this texture here kind of works, but I'm not too keen on the texture on the bodysuit. I get it, but I kind of feel like if you were going to keep this, lose the cross hatching and the black marks and instead go for a wash, which would give you a much more even um, uh, texture and tone all around. Again, I am I am impressed that the claws aren't warped. At least they're, they're semi-straight. You know, this one's a little bit protruding downward a little bit too much but that's forgivable uh, the display base is cool you know you have the x-men logo and then kind of like the shrapnel you know as if they're fighting magneto in the junkyard or wherever now the one thing that uh, i'm impressed with these figures is that like much like the deadpool um i kind of feel like they're almost like within the same scale as the marvel legends figures so if you wanted to you could possibly display these alongside them so I have a Hasbro Marvel Legends Wolverine figure right here. Uh, I can't remember which wave this belonged to. I kind of want to say maybe the... It might have been from the build a figure for Apocalypse. You know, we've gotten so many Wolverine figures. So we're going to try to see if we can kind of recreate this pose. But it'll give you an idea of this, the size and the scale. All right, let's see if I can do this. It's not going to be one for one exact, but it's going to be as close as I could. Yeah, something like this. All right. And this is the one thing I hate about them. It's like every Marvel Legends Wolverine, even like dating back to the Toy Biz days, it's like impossible to get a figure where the claws are straight. Yeah, so this kind of gives you an idea of the size. You know, this one is a teeny bit larger than the Hasbro one, but, you know, if you want to, you, you can still display them, I think, alongside your Marvel Legends. I think it's you know, it's a decent fit. You know, the Deadpool seemed like it was pretty much in scale with Vulcan over here. But yeah, I think this line has promise. I'm really hoping they stick with this. You know, so many times McFarlane Toys have... Uh, given us new uh, action figures for toy lines, but then they wouldn't <laughs> necessarily last. You know, much like the Harry Potter line or Game of Thrones. You know, those are two properties I was I'm very I'm very big I'm a very big fan of, and I was really looking forward to like you know multiple action figures. But I think with Harry Potter, we just got the four figures and maybe like a dragon. You know, Game of Thrones likewise. We only got a handful of figures and a bunch of repaints. 
But I f I'm hoping this line continues because there's so many iconic images from Marvel Comics. You know, whether it's from the uh, cover artwork or the interior artwork, I'd love to see them recreate that. And then there's also the larger statues. I think there's the larger Captain America and the larger Spider-Man. Um, I have yet to obtain any of those. I'm kind of curious to see, um, you know, with the larger scale, uh, if there's more detail, if the paint job is superior to the smaller figures like these. The price point, I think, is a little bit high on, on these. I think it's anywhere between, what was it, $25 or $29, which is kind of pricey. Uh, for some people, I can see this being a turnoff, especially since they're not posable. Uh, for me, you know, it's like I said, you know, this is kind of a uh, flashback to that time period of the late 90s and early 2000s when McFarlane really made this miniature statues, and I, I love that style of action figure. Uh, one of my favorite McFarlane toys um, lines from the early 2000s was The Art of Spawn. And those were great. They recreated uh, iconic uh, Spawn covers, and they were like these miniature statues at maybe like a one-tenth scale. And those were amazing. But yeah, I kind of feel like this line has a lot of promise. It's just a question of whether or not they're going to stick with it. Uh, is this something for you? It depends. If you're a fan of Wolverine and the X-Men, you know, maybe. Uh, if you're into, like, collecting pop culture memorabilia, not necessarily action figures, this be this might be more up your speed. You know, this would be a nice uh, display piece for your bookshelf or your, um, you know, your uh, man cave or gaming setup. It's small. It doesn't take up a lot of space. So it's cool. I dig it a lot. And I saw the Iron Man. I saw the Spider-Man. The Spider-Man figure, it looks all right. But I think I'm, if, I, if I was to pull the trigger on a, another figure in the near future, it might be the Iron Man. And if I happen to find another Wolverine, I'm definitely going to get one because I'd love to try my hand at repainting it. Because I think there's a lot of potential here if you're like a customizer. Um, especially if you're like a miniature painter, this is something I think has, uh, so much potential for like, you know, elevating it to a, like a higher level. But yeah, overall, I think it's a nice piece. I'm very happy that I purchased it. And again, here's that figure in, con in conjunction with the enclosed insert. It looks nice. You know, so... All right, so let's wrap this one up. Uh, once again, my name is Lou. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. I greatly appreciate it. So until the next video, be safe, take care of yourself, buy lots of toys, and most importantly, be happy. And I'll see you at the next one. All right, later.